So when you, yeah. you took the pictures, that was you in between the second and third fight? That was the right before the third fight. I was waiting. At, it was the King's Cup. This was the King's there birthday. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, Fuck. that's actually. Yeah. And you can see my ankle and it actually went underneath my toes. Oh, and this is before that you was, have to fight again. Both legs were like that. Yeah. Both were like this. And you have to fight again. Yeah. That and is, that's, so do you know Wooden Man, John uh -huh. That's him rubbing me. And so he tried to give me the Muay Thai. They give you the pre-fight massage with the yeah. Thai limit. He couldn't fucking touch me. It was How so bad. How the fuck did you fight like this? I don't know. But I did. That is so insane. Yeah. It, Your legs are so banged up. The fact that you fought. Yeah. Yeah. And it, so like mentally I was just like, wow, this is, this is, this is happening. This is, I'm, I'm going to do this. And I'd look at my legs. Okay. Okay. This is happening. This is, this is okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, once you started got, fighting, what did you feel? I don't think about that. Like sometimes you get kicked and it gets, it goes through, like it gets through your four shield, you know, like you kind of put up this, like, I don't know when I fight, it's like I'm fighting and the right. thing, yeah, it's a four shield mm -hmm. in a sense, you know? Um, and, uh, sometimes if it hurts enough, like when I got my ribs cracked, I felt that right. like it went through and I like disrupted my four shield. And so sometimes that something would go through like a good your solid four kick. Shield. So my four shield, so you have four shield activate your attitude. Your mindset. Yeah. This is like you're fighting, you're you're ready to accept all sorts of things. Yeah, like I could die. Or even harder, I could kill someone. Do you think it'd be harder to kill someone than to die? Um, so harder no. on you? Yeah. Yeah. Because then you think about their loved ones. Mm. So think about all the people that loved you. We fight. Think about all the people that love you, right? Yeah. And so when we fight I didn't, I didn't break any rules, but I killed you. Right. Think about all your loved ones. Everybody that loves you that's attached to you. Think about that. All that pain. It's a lot of Because of what pain. I did to you, right. even though I didn't break any rules. Have you ever been in a promotion where someone died? Mm -mm. But that's heavy, right? Yeah. And I, don't, I think probably why a lot of fighters... I, I've noticed like there's, there's, I don't think a, the majority of fighters um, look at what they do with the gravity that, that it deserves, mm. you know, like you could kill somebody. Like you need to think about that and be okay with that. Not okay, but just understand like, all right, that could happen. And I'm going to be con I'm consciously knowing this and choosing to go forward. They just think, oh, I'm going to fight. It'll be fun. It'll, you know, whatever. Or it'll be hard. Or I'm going to, like, whatever. They don't think about these things. Is this something that you thought about when you were young? Yeah, before I really got into it. So you, this is a, a, something you've been contemplating even before you started fighting. You were aware of all the possibilities. Yeah. I. Okay. All right. I'll say it. So I was, um, it was uh, about 28, I think. And I don't think I had my pro boxing debut yet and I took some mushrooms <laughs> and I was thinking it, somewhere along the trip I started thinking about fighting and I started thinking about like what could happen to me and I think I started thinking about the death of me and then I started thinking about what could happen to my opponent like what's worse than that and I thought about I could see like somebody I fight and I saw all the like like lines of gold thread attached into them like uh from their loved ones and then all the lines got snipped Whoa. when they died yeah i saw this on this mushroom trip and i was just like fuck and so then when i decided to fight there's more intent you know and, and more commitment and more resolve that's heavy yeah yeah but, but that is what it is right mm -hmm. and that's where the, i think real there's more power to people that have never fought before and people that don't understand fighting, they do this, uh, I don't get the appeal, I don't know why you watch it, the, the reason that pe one of the reasons, there's many reasons, but one of the reasons why people enjoy participating in it so much is because there's so much risk and it's so mm. dangerous and it's so difficult, so unbelievably difficult to prepare, unbelievably difficult to put yourself in the proper mind state especially yeah. to be a champion, to, to, yeah. to beat the best of the best, to get to the top of the heap, mm -hmm. that once you do succeed, 
like explain that feeling to people. Explain that feeling when they raise your hand and put that belt around your waist and the crowd is cheering. I'm kind of weird because I actually get depressed. You get depressed? <laughs> you get depressed when you win? Uh, at times, yeah. Or, or I'm just... I think for me, what I've come to realize about myself is that it's about authentic expressing myself in the moment and I think with a lot of my fights I wasn't being honest I didn't take my heart and cut it open and pour it out on the mat or the canvas I played it safe I didn't go in for the knockout I didn't slip a punch and counter and and get inside I stayed outside or when I was inside I would clinch up an elbow and knee you know so um for me it hurts when I'm being inauthentic and I know that with pretty much all of my Muay Thai fights, I, I wasn't. <laughs> but is that the case, or is it you being hypercritical of yourself? Always. Always. Yeah, always. So, so I've, I've actually, you just had Kieran on, and he can attest to this. I've, I've come out of fights and, and won the world title, done a great job, and I go into the gym the next week, and I go, Kieran, this was stupid. I looked stupid. I didn't do this right. This is fucked up. I can't fight like that again. Like, we got to fix that. And I'm just like that. But that's what makes a champion, though. Yeah. But mine was unhealthy. So mine was mm. more. I think, I think I'm more of a champion now than I ever was when I was actively fighting. And when I was, um, I, I was trying to be good enough instead of just focusing on, How did I say this? My 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 pursuit of world titles wasn't wasn't about it. It was a uh, in a defense of something that was told to me when I was growing up. So it's like I'm world champion, so you can't tell that's not true because I'm world champion. Right. So that's what that was about for me. So it was so, about making up for a lack of love, a lack of appreciation or just for a, abuse. Yeah, lack of, like I'm not good enough, so I'm going right. to win this world title and prove that I right. am good enough. So F you. And that's not a, a pure place to express yourself from. Right. You know, like now um, I'm more of a martial artist than I've ever been and I'm more of a teacher and a student than I've ever been and I'm more of a champion than I've ever been. How are you more of a champion than you've ever been? It's the way uh, my outlook and the way uh, I learn, the way I attack new information, the way how malleable I am, um, and how quickly I take things on, you know, how driven, you know. It's easy to be, it's a lot easier to be champion when you have the six pack and the muscles and the youth and the everything to back that up. But when you have those things taken away from you, then what is a champion? What is it without those things? It's your heart. It's your desire. It's your resolve. It's your mind. But using this expression, champion, like what? What? Why? Why champion? Because you're if you're a champion, you're competing against someone to become a champion. That's what makes you a champion. Myself. Right. So to do it you better, have to a learn better it faster, mastery to, yeah. over the things that you feel held you back and limited your potential when you actually were a world champion kickboxer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so yeah. now it's more about self-expression. You're a more balanced person. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And now it's a pursuit of self-expression and it's a pursuit of authenticity um, and like finding that moment to ride the razor's edge. Instead of playing it safe and staying outside, but not having a satisfying fight. Yeah. You know? Even though you won, not having satisfying fights because yeah. you, f you could feel the flaws. Yeah. I, well, I could just feel how I was holding back. Right. And it's like, you can feel when you're in the zone and you go for it in 100% commitment and you're just in it. You know, you're in it. It's what so fights, authentic. What fights have you had where you really felt satisfied? Uh... I, I would say the fight after I fought Julie. Yeah, she was, I went up Julie. in kitchen. Yeah, I went up in weight to fight her. She, she um, I went up to 140. It was a champion of champions. She had 58 fights, I think 14 world titles. I had 14 fights at the time and six world titles, I think. And um, That's pretty crazy. 14 fights, six world titles. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I you know, started Karrion late. said that you were the most talented person he's ever worked with. I would agree. <laughs> I would. I would. Because it's so... What that's I, high praise. What I noticed... Karen Fitzgibbons. I mean, that's really... Yeah. It's amazing stuff. Well, I'm malleable. And I'm really dry. Like, I'm like, no, that's not right. Do it again. Mm-hmm. That doesn't feel right. Do it again. What am I? What are you doing? What am I doing? What does it look like? What should it feel like? Where's my pressure? Where's the leverage? What's this? Da, 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 you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like... I'm like that. You know, no, it's not right. Let's do it again. Oh, that was perfect, but let's move on to the next thing. And this sort of level of dissatisfaction with your performances, though, don't you think that that's ultimately what makes you s- such a champion in the first place? Like, you, you, Alexander Gustafson ha- put it best once when he was talking about one of his training camps. He's like, this is the, the life of a professional athlete. You're just never satisfied. He says, if you, achieve, if you want to achieve greatness, you're never satisfied. Yeah, no, I agree. But not with the way I was doing it. So you were doing it, but you were doing it in a manic, almost unhealthy way? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I could never just give myself that. Right. I could never be like, all right, that was great. This needs adjustments. Right. All right, so here's the game plan. You know, like, mm-hmm. oh, here, you know, you did this. This is an accomplishment. Uh, or, you know, you, you conquered this. You took on this new skill. All right, let's give yourself that credit. Right. It was always, ah, oh, never good enough. Ah, oh, never good enough. Ah, mm. oh, never, never good enough, you know. But is that never good enough fuel? Like, is that thought, like, never good enough, never good enough? No, it's is definitely that, fuel. It is, right? But it's not. Not there's, healthy. There's, there's much it's more crack. environmentally friendly fuel. <laughs> like, this is, like, <laughs> con- pollutants. It's yeah. pollutants. And, and as far as your life goes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, now, so, um, I am working with, I am back at CSA working with Kirian, mm-hmm. you know, but I told him, um, for, for Muay Thai, I actually told Dave and I, Kirian this, or did I kill tell Kirian? Well, I guess I'm telling him now. If I were to have a Muay Thai fight, obviously I'm not gonna, you know, I would, I wouldn't be with anybody else. Mm-hmm. Like he's, that's where the success has been. That's where the formula works. I'm not going to change that. But um, now I'm also over at uh, Gorilla Jiu-Jitsu with Dave Camarillo. Mm-hmm. And so, Excellent coach. Oh, my God. Genius. Oh, my Fucking Jedi Knight, dude. Yeah. He's a Jedi Knight. Great guy, too. Holy shit. Yeah, he's amazing. He's amazing. Um, but now I get to learn from him 